What's happening, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. In this video, I want to take a look at Gravital Digital, both visually and seeing how it works, and also under the hood. With any website critique, I think about three things. One, how does it look? Two, how does it function? And three, how we can improve it, because websites are always a continual improvement, including my own. In looking at this website, I absolutely love this first image. I love the image on the screen, even though it does have that emoji keyboard, which always drove me nuts when I had that MacBook Pro, which is a side story I will not get into. But that being said, the glow of the picture of the MacBook Pro with this type just fits so nicely. It just has a congruency and it is really successful. If we scroll down to this white type in the middle of the page, I am almost never a fan of centering type. Centering type just feels boring. That being said, this centering type does work for two things. One, it's not too wide across the page where it's too hard to read. And then the size of the font makes the relative width that much stronger to read going down the page. I love how this jam stack kind of pops out on the page here. And so it kind of continues from this gradient look. And I'm kind of seeing there's a gradient trend almost with this picture down here. I don't know if I would say powered by Jamstack only because if I'm thinking about this end user, which is more or less companies that are going to hire this company, I think about, are they going to really even understand what a Jamstack is? That's just more of a curiosity factor that just kind of makes me go, well, that's cool. It's powered by Jamstack, but in the same sentence for an end user, are they going to really know or care about this sentence? Coming down the page, unlock the potential of your website, digging this. Again, the type works on centering. Usually I'm not a fan of it, but in this case it does. And I'm seeing that continuization of gradients down the page. Really strong. Speed, period, boom. The TGV from France. Awesome pictures wherever you're finding them. And again, I'm not usually a centering fan. I'm becoming a broken record, but this is really readable. This is where it's readable enough where I can get through three lines of content right here. I also love this little arrow that kind of points down. So it tells me I have to keep going. If I come down the page, flexibility, boom, we have this graphic with the type. You spent so much time on these gradients that I am totally digging them. And they're not in my face gradients. They just really flow really successfully. So huge kudos to the design that it doesn't interrupt the flow of readability and reliability. Boom. Our Jamstack websites. Again, I'm not going to talk about the centering type. We've already discussed that. And these arrows just keep pushing me down the page and I'm liking this. We build modern websites and apps, loving these whole different titles on the pages. And now we get into the different demographics and speeds and paragraphs, which I'm loving. And the fact that you built this all in text, my first glance was this is totally going to be an SVG file, but no, you really did all this. And this looks beautiful. Uh, your size of type, different pieces. We'll get into the H1s and H2s later going on. But overall, I love how you just have the type big and then the type small coming down the page. And you've got, I mean, this is an obvious graphic, but you made all the type type. That is no small feat, and I appreciate all the details because you really have immense control over your code where you have everything in these beautiful gradients coming out, and gradients are not easy to do either. So this looks really beautiful. I love also amongst all of these pieces, you made sure speed was the biggest piece in the design, and that's the part I like a lot in this approach is that the fact that you have speed standing out and you read things across this page in a more consistent way where if speed was smaller, I'd be going back and forth, back and forth. So excellent design approach here. You know what, first for the fun of it, I'm gonna make it mobile and see what the heck happens. Let's go back up. Again, this looks really good. I think you have to worry a little bit about the jam stack being lost in this background with the contrast. But that's the only thing. Overall, <laughs> you rocked this responsive design. And I am digging this whole thing right here. Just excellent job. We'll get the stuff in the back later on. I didn't mean to show that, but you know, it is there for this point in time. All right, let me come back this deck of the woods. 
again, you have the speed piece coming up nice and big. You've got the pan Macmillan, the 8%, and just overall, really wonderful job. Is this, I think this is an SVG file. Uh, SVG, excellent job of using the SVG files in here as well. Oh, I lost it again. There it is. Uh, just whenever you can, designers out there, please use SVG files. They just make everything look so much better than JPEGs or PNGs. So excellent job on that one with the alt, the Pan McMillan logo. Wonderful approach here in that design. Speed coming down. Perfect publishers, a dream for developers. Yeah, I'm just loving these titles. Like, I just want to keep digesting what you have here. This is where design really works is because I want to keep reading. If it gets too busy and I think that your success in your design here works because you made me pause. You have so much information that it would be really easy to cram everything together. And these blocks of space just make me pause, read, and now digest. And this looks great. Again, the title of flexibility, this is being the biggest and the strongest on contrast. Content from everywhere and then the paragraph down below. Just excellent job on the design approach. Flexibility, same thing here. I just want to keep going and reading and you just have a successful design. Really, really great. Coming down, reliable CDN hosting. Pay only when you need scale. The one thing about CDNs I think about is again, the end user. If I didn't know what a CDN was, I wouldn't know it's a content delivery network if I didn't work in this industry. So sometimes when we use acronyms, this is just a minimal piece of usability. I might just say reliable hosting versus CDN because it would confuse some people. Again, this is potato, potato. I just think about when I use acronyms in the industry, if I say JS, and no one knew what JavaScript was, then the JS would be lost. So this is just minimal of CDN pieces. I mentioned yesterday to a client that I said SVG forgot, and I they were like, what is it? I'm like, oh, I had to describe it was a scalable vector graphic because to them, an SVG is just a file. So just watch acronyms as we write little things, just very small. Zero hacks, zero downtime. I mean, you really rocked on your gradients and your type. Excellent job here. And again, I will stop mentioning this, your, your server side, <laughs> your centering. I saw the word server and I meant to say center. Your centering works. Uh, it really is successful, which is really hard to pull off. So kudos to that. I already know what you built, type, type, type. I mean, yeah, these are pictures obviously, but everything else is type. Rock and roll, you did an amazing job on those pieces. Supercharge, coming down, we have websites, those look good. The one thing I did notice, and this is just a minimal piece, I think it was down here, is when I went to the mobile side, oh, now it's working, did I do it right? One of these pictures, where it, uh, maybe it did work. I'm trying to figure out, I thought there was a problem Okay, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, I thought I had a note to go over this, but when I looked at it somewhere, I forget where, it, see, I now I forget where it was, but at one point in time, if I try to make this, whoa there. Uh, I do these kind of live in a way where I try on purpose to shoot from the hip as I talk about them. I do have notes, and I think it was, no, I, you know, I can't find it. Well. Darn, <laughs> uh, somewhere I thought I saw it where these pictures were not being centered properly, but they're working fine. So you know what, I take it back, ignore this. Uh, what I love about the rollover is that your contrast still fits in all the pictures. Yes, the pictures are a little pixelated, but again, we can't control that, that is totally fine. We have everything working really successfully still down the page. I keep being a broken record here. As I continue down, Excellent job of screenshots of different pieces. Upgrade Confly the modern web. We got the logos and I love how again, you used SVG files for these because they make them look super clean and professional. Going down the page, again, gradients all work, content and contrast work. You just have them working. The one thing I might watch for in design is notice how your quotes go uh, 
I'm say above below the white type. So it's a little hard to read Preston Studios. Yes, we have the title up here, the logo. So to me, it doesn't bother me too much, but I might just try to fade out that SVG graphic of the quotes as they go behind. Or what I do is almost do a pull quote where I'll pull the quotes out and then tuck the type in. Just a little design extra element. And what I usually also do is I actually will just type the actual quote at the end or use a pseudo class to put it at the end by saying pseudo class after and then just adding content close quote to put inside that little extra piece. Just a minimal area going on to close the quote so it becomes full circle. Now the question becomes, is this a block quote? Come on, come on block quote. There, yeah, now we're talking. Uh, making sure that you do use block quotes for your quotes. It's minimal, but we should use the proper tag, and you got that. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for people out there who are watching the video. Nope, we're not going that wide. Let's go back. Uh, I do see a block quote for your quotes. Excellent job in this direction. And I usually do recommend the site tag in the block quote. It's not mission critical. But I could always see in setting a div for the Don Bear CEO, what really helps in design, especially in CSS, is the site tag. And if we do it quickly, if we do site tag, let's see if Mozilla comes up first. Uh, it's just basically, basically to cite the title of a creative work. I use the site tag in block quotes because you're citing a reference for the most part. In terms of it, it's not a big deal as you do have the block quote, but I would most likely recommend a site tag if you want to change that, but if not, no big deal. Uh, Gravital Digital, excellent job down here. Gravital Styles produced by just digging it. If we go back to the top, the one thing I didn't show off also I want to show before I do a little critique on a couple things on the back end, but your, if I flip this to the responsive design, I really like the look of this. I was expecting to see some sort of hamburger menu with Gravital Digital. And I love how you change things where the contact, where if we look at it, we lost the showcase, which is okay because I can't click curse on that part, but I click right on contact and I love the logo on the left-hand side and the spacing just looks fantastic for speed, flexibility, reliability, and services. And it all fits any one of the designs up that little the samsung s8 might drop it down but for the most part pixel 5 looks great here and it fits excellent job when it comes to the navigation going on at the very top now a couple things speaking of navigation i did notice one little hiccup here is if we come up to the top if we look at this navigation you do have the nav tag which looks great but what I'm looking for also is that not just the A's, but I'm looking for the nav ULLI. As we kind of saw before, I did pull this up. If we look at the W3org and we look at the menu structure, it does prefer to have the ULLI, even though I don't like the word home, the fact that we have the ULLI A is what we're looking for in terms of an order, unordered list as a menu navigation. So I always try to make sure I include that in my design. You have the nav, you have the A, let's just include the UL LI in this design and then you're all set to go there. One other piece as well, I did run a quick web dev. Just double check, I do, come on rollover, stop out of this way. Double check to see if you are running the Gatsby plugin preload fonts. It did mention when I did run a web dev, that the fonts didn't apply at load. I didn't see that, but I'm just making sure if you aren't aware of this, it's a great plugin to use to preload your fonts because they do look fantastic. And then the other thing to look at was headings. And this is where your site, it does challenge a little bit, but it does work. So I think about H1 should only be one or two per page. So if we take a look at this H1 section, you can put the main heading before navigation if you say H1 space Teddy Inc. However, the navigation menu becomes this sidebar and H2. I think about in terms of this design, notice how there's only a, one H1 on a page. And that's because it helps to have the structure go down the page as we look at it. 
So this design says the H1 is up here and the H2 is the navigation menu. The H1 you do have right in this design with the H1 at the very top, but then this becomes an H3. And so we're kind of missing the H2 where it should go H1, H2, H3, not H1, H3, H2. I try to ignore when I go into CSS, yes, I can totally change the size of any heading that I want. But if I were to not have an, any CSS applied, would it still make sense to have an H1, H2, H3, or an H1, H3, H2? Going down the page, this is where I think you have the H2. That looked really good. And then in theory, if we unlock the potential, the speed would in theory be most likely an H3 because the speed is a subsection of unlock the potential of your website. So just double check that because I don't think of this as an H1. I think of that being an H3. And your site does go down to maybe an H4 as we go down the page, but overall like flexibility, uh, that's an H1 when it should be more an H3. It's just minimal, but I think about for web accessibility, how can I structure my headings that organize the flow in terms of content? So there's just two little things I was looking at in the design. I think there was also an H1 up here. Maybe there wasn't, did I miss it? Nope, I'm losing it. There is no H1 up there. I don't think there was. There was an H2, which is okay. That H2 is totally fine because the H1, H2, and it follows the website that does say that if you do want that, you can put the H1 spaced heady and then the navigation menu becomes the H2, which is totally fine to have as well. So just a minimal piece. I did see a few more issues down below on the pages where I think it was, was it this one as well was the H1? Yeah, so those would be essentially be H1, H2s. They're just minimal areas that I would just take a look at. And I think a few sections were, that was a paragraph, that that might be the H4. And I think about it where normally I don't get to the H4 and even the H5 and the H6 are basically like non-existent in my book. Like I don't know if I can't remember the last time I built with an H5, but basically in this design, I would just think about the hierarchy of type when it comes to it. It's minimal in the design because everything else looks fantastic and flows. And I'm digging this. Uh, overall, successful job. And I'm just loving how fast and flexible it is. Kudos to the Gatsby world for making this a very fast load that you got here. So overall, excellent job. Watch for those couple little pieces in the design with the usability. But overall, big thumbs up. Excellent work.